John's question. Does Cam think that Mario is that dude as in terms of him getting Miami to the playoffs over the next three years, or is Mario there to stack the talent and be replaced? I think the goal is for Mario to be that dude while stacking the talent himself. And, you know, the reason that you bring him in is his obsessive nature in terms of recruiting and talent acquisition. So, you want the program, you want the talent on the roster to be better. You bring in the guy to make it better, and then hopefully that guy is able to get the performance to be better as well. The guy who went to three uh, Pac-12 championship games and won it twice in four years at Oregon. You know, so I don't. I mean, it's hard to say that. It almost comes down to that conversation topic of who's the next coach who hasn't won a championship to be a championship coach. You know, and for a long time, it was okay. It's going to be Kirby. Kirby finally got one. Cool. Jimbo has one. Nick has a million. Dabble has a couple. Um, am I missing anybody? Currently Mac working. Brown. Going way back. Jesus. Okay, yeah, Mac Brown has one. But I honestly don't think he's going to add another one. He wouldn't no. be in this conversation, right? So, I mean, could Mario be on that list? Yeah. It'd be interesting to see where people might think that he would be on that list, but I don't think that, yeah, I don't think that he was brought in just to put some systems in place, change some structures, re, uh, reshape the roster, and then move on. The goal is for him to also take a step to become a national championship coach here at Miami. He's proven that he can win his division. He's proven that he can win his conference elsewhere. So we need to get back, continue that kind of performance, and then take the step forward. So um, it remains to be seen if he's able to do that. I think that the potential is there. Um, but I would go more towards uh, Cristobal being that dude than just a rebuilder and a reshaper to go get another guy. Right? Because, first of all, who are you going to get who's like, an upgrade because all due respect to Manny Diaz, this is an upgrade. Clearly, sorry, it is. Who are you gonna go get that's a clear upgrade from Cristobal? Right? And then he's a Cuban American from Miami, played at Miami, won two championships in Miami, coached at Miami twice, has gone elsewhere, prodigal son, right? You know, goes and goes to the uh Nick Saban school for wayward coaches goes there as their ace recruiter, all these five stars, even from Florida, develops there. I mean, first, I mean, he was at FIU and turned FIU into a program that was putting people into the league, T.Y. Hilton, Jonathan Cyprian, right? All who in the league with names that you know, and there's other guys as well, but he goes there and learns, okay, this is how I want to run a program. Da, 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 da. Okay, cool. Got sent out there because Pete Garcia is the worst AD in the history of athletics and made a stupid-ass decision to get rid of Mario Cristobal. What the fuck are you thinking? At FIU with the job of – Aiden Ford at FIU? And you get rid of this man who wanted to be there at the time? You're so stupid. Anyway, but he goes from there. He'd already previously coached Miami. Done the, you know, thing. Comes back for a week. Saban goes and plucks him. Goes to over there. Okay, now I'm in the SEC. We're going to level that up. Make those connections. See what that championship current at the time championship program is like. Then gets a name brand job at Oregon and continues their progression and raises the bar there in terms of talent acquisition, in terms of production and performance. Now I know Chip Kelly got to a championship game and everything, but like Helfrich wasn't really doing much, you know. What? It Taggart. Wasn't... Oh, it, well, right. So it was Helfers and then Taggart. But Taggart had left to go to Florida State, which is a super name brand program, of course. I'm not going to fault him for leaving that for that. But goes there, does pretty damn well. And then after all of this that has taken me away from Miami, now I'm going to come back to Miami so that all of the things that I've learned and all the systems I've had and all the things that I've done all of that leads me here to do that 
in the place where I'm from, at the school that I went to, with some of the people that I love most in this world. And, you know, rest in peace to his mother. And I know that that was a, a big factor in him choosing to come back. And she passed away very shortly after he did return home. But your high school friend, Alex Mirabal, has worked with you in your entire career. He's going to be your associate head coach and offensive line coach. You get Frank Potts back to Miami, who's from Miami, off of a play-calling offensive coordinator job at Appalachian State. Not a, you know, not the biggest job in the world, but, like, that's a, arguably one of the best jobs you can have in the group of five, right? Offensive coordinator, play-calling offensive coordinator there. You get him to come back. That's another Miami. Kevin Smith from Miami, running back and went to UCF, played in the league for your Detroit Lions, second round draft pick. Um, you know, and was coaching at Ole Miss before he came over here, which is why Henry Parrish comes down. You know, and then you get a star studded cast of coaches to, to be with you. Crystal Ball did not set this up for someone else to come in and succeed. He's building this for him to be the guy leading this program forward to the greatness to which we all greatly aspire. So, yeah, I think that the plan is for him to be the dude. If he's, if it doesn't work out that way, it doesn't work out that way. But I would say the goal is definitely for him to be that dude. We'll see if uh, he's able to lead this team there. But, yeah, that that would be my answer. 